believe college football fans, not just in the ACC, but across the nation, are very intrigued to see what North Carolina's got for us here in 21, following a breakout season in 2020, but with some key personnel losses. we got Ross Martin on the line from Inside Carolina on the 247 Sports platform to help us break it down. Please like the videos, share them out on social media. If you enjoy the content, others will as well. So share the videos and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. Hey, Ross, what's going on today? Hey, what's going, Mark? Not much. Uh, getting ready for the ACC tournament today, but uh, it's always football season here at Inside Carolina. So we recorded a football recruiting podcast this morning and gearing up for spring practice, which starts a little bit later for UNC, starting off in, uh, I believe, March 24th. So we're just about starting some spring football content here at Inside Carolina. I know. And even though it's been an off season, I know Carolina basketball, it's March. I'm kind of taking mm-hmm. you off the uh, the laser focus of, of basketball, but um, we do nothing but football here. So here we go. You got a um, good start to the uh, 22 class with uh, fourth ranked uh, class, according to 247 Sports in the ACC, number 21 in the nation. Four hard commits at this point. Um, your thoughts about uh, who's committed thus far? Yeah, what really stands out is that UNC has mined uh, Virginia for three of their four commitments. There's a little bit less talent in the state of North Carolina compared to the 2021 season. So UNC is going to be going out of state a little bit more to get the uh, type of talent they need. They have the two early commit, two two first commits, uh, Tayon Holloway and Tyshawn Chapman, um, speedsters, athletic guys out of Virginia. Um, in that Virginia Beach area, which Dre Bly has really opened up to the Tar Heels. Uh, UNC did really well in that area under Mac Brown back in the 90s, and they're, again, uh, really recruiting that area heavily. They got a, a couple from there in the last couple classes and two more already. Um, but this should be a Virginia-heavy class for UNC. They're going after two offensive tackles in the uh, Commonwealth as well. Uh, last week, two weeks ago or so, they landed a commitment from Malachi Hamrick out of Shelby, North Carolina. Um, so, yeah, it's not – 22 recruiting is weird because of the dead period that's lasted pretty much since the, the coronavirus pandemic started. So a lot of players are committing without visiting. A lot of players are waiting to commit until they can visit, which might not be until June, July, August into the, the next football season. So it's a little bit slower moving, I think, for all schools. But there's also the factor that there's less spots because of the extra year that every player is getting. Um, So UNC might take a smaller class, which might be the case around the country, depending on, you know, who's staying, who's going. Um, So the uh, spots are a little more valuable. They're not offering as many players. And the commitments um, are a little bit slower because they don't have tape, junior tape from these kids yet. So the evaluation process delayed as well. But four commitments for UNC, um, defensive back, wide receiver, outside linebacker, and offensive tackle, um, three out of the four from Virginia. Yeah, three of these guys especially are highly rated. Holloway, the 15th rated cornerback in the nation. Uh, he's a top 150 player according to 247 Sports. So is uh, Hamrick, uh, top 50, mm-hmm. 150 player, 12th rated at outside linebacker. He's in North Carolina back to Virginia for Tyshawn uh, Chapman, 20th rated wide receiver. Good stuff. Got Ross Martin on the line from uh, Inside Carolina, 247 Sports, breaking down the heels. So if we jettison that forward to what's going on right now on campus, or will be very soon. I'm sure they've had workouts, of course, but in terms of spring practice, with 21 in the class of 21, and 12 of those guys will be on campus uh, I know it starts with this five-star, Keyshawn Silver, uh, fourth-rated, strong side defensive end in the country. But, um, you know, the guys that stand out to you that you really think could pop and make an impact this fall. Yeah, so 12 guys enrolled early, and then 13 if you include the transfer running back from Tennessee, um, Ty Chandler, uh, who will get an extra year and is using it to play at Carolina. Um so, I mean, Ty Chandler, actually, you can't really include this in this class, but he's a newcomer who should be an impact player and should be one of the main guys at running back for UNC. Outside of him, a um, couple names to know. I do think Keyshawn Silver and Javari Ritzy, the two defensive tackles, defensive linemen, 
uh, should be guys who can get you 20, 25 snaps a game. At least one of them should be kind of an impact player. You know, that that's a position that takes a bunch, a bunch of uh, at least a couple of years to develop. So look for at least one of those guys to midway through the season be an impact player. Excuse me. The fact that they're getting them in the spring, adding weight, getting used to the um, level of competition needed for the college level is huge for those two guys, Ritzy and Silver. Um, I think Renary Dilworth is going to be an interesting guy to follow. A little undersized um, for the linebacker position, but he's put on weight already. He's listed at 6'2", 193. UNC may have him a little bit shorter or taller. I'm not sure, but that's his recruiting size. Um, you know, he picked UNC over Alabama, had a bunch of offers. I think Bama and some schools wanted him at safety. UNC wants him at linebacker. He's going to play linebacker. Super fast guy, super athletic. Um, it could be deployed in some you know, third down sets. Just a, a dynamic athlete that defensive coordinator Jay Bateman is going to find a way to use. Um, you know, the wide receivers could have a chance. J.J. Jones, Gavin Blackwell, Kobe Passor all en uh, enrolled early. That's UNC's probably deepest position. Um, but who knows? You never know when one freshman can kind of break in and uh, you know, injuries could play a factor there. And then Caleb Hood, he's one of the lower-ranked players in UNC's 2021 class, but he's a quarterback who's playing running back in college, super strong athlete. He's the biggest running back on UNC's roster in terms of weight, uh, strength. So he, I think he's going to be one of the three running backs for UNC this season as a rookie. He does need to make the position transfer to running back, um, but he has a lot of the physical tools that no one else in that room has. So Caleb Hood out of Richmond High School in Rocky Hill, North Carolina. A uh, high school quarterback for four years, playing running back in college, 6'1", 230. Um, his spark score was off the charts, one of the, one of the best in the state. Uh, and they really like what he can bring. Uh, his, his recruiting ranking is a little weird because, you know, obviously he's a quarterback in high school. He's playing a completely different position in college. But uh, that's a name to know. Caleb Hood, same last name as Elijah Hood, who started for the Tar Heels in 2015 and 16. I don't believe they're related, but um, interesting connection there. That's what I'm looking at. And those are the kind of some of the 12 guys that have already enrolled early, been there since January, uh, and starting spring practice uh, March uh, 24th. So again, 12 on campus uh, here in the next few weeks when they hit the uh, spring practice field. Um, I'm looking at, what, two, four, six of these guys – are ranked in the top 10 at their position. So highly rated guys should be interesting to see them. And you mentioned uh, Caleb Hood. You also mentioned Ty Chandler. Of course, uh, he's got uh, a lot of uh, experience under his belt. 2,000 yards at Tennessee, 16 touchdowns, about five yards per carry. And that leads us right into a number of positions that are up for grabs here in the spring. And the one that comes to mind, I think, for most people would be with those two monsters, uh, gone to the NFL, Javante Williams and Michael Carter, Ty Chandler in the mix, Caleb Hood. How do you assess the running back situation? Yeah, um, that should get the most pub uh, going into the season. You know, you always look at the question marks and you start talking about these position groups in spring and you pick it back up in July and August, September. Uh, running back, like you mentioned, they lose Michael Carter and Javante Williams, who was basically a two headed monster for UNC and gained the most snaps. They should be, you know, first should be gone in the first three rounds of the NFL draft. So who replaces them? Uh, Ty Chandler, a transfer from Tennessee, uh, has experience. They needed that experience. They need that kind of uh, veteran. Um, you know, they need some speed. They need the veteran presence, all that good stuff. So you expect Ty Chandler to at least be a, a big-time factor. Um, pulled up the roster here. I had the basketball roster pulled up. Um, and then, yeah, I think Hood could be a player. Also look for DJ Jones, who's going to be a sophomore, and Elijah Green, who's going to be a sophomore, to be impact players. I don't I don't know much about those guys. I mean, no one really saw those guys last year just because of um, how much time that Carter and Williams got. So it's really who steps up in the spring and who can uh, stay healthy and be a factor in the fall. But uh, look for it to be kind of by committee, even though I think Chandler, Hood, and Jones are the front runners. Um, with Green and a junior named Josh Henderson as the fourth and fifth back. But we'll see. I mean, I don't, I don't know too much about Jones and Green and really Hood because we haven't seen them play at all. We know what Ty Chandler can do. He did it at Tennessee and was relatively productive. But usually there's a reason why people transfer 
Um, and he is uh, out of Tennessee, maybe because he wasn't getting the playing time or maybe he just wanted a fresh start. So all eyes in the running back room to complement what Sam Howe and the experience at, at wide receiver and offensive line that UNT has come back on that side of the ball. Yeah, I think the situation in Tennessee might be a little bit different because of all the yeah. upheaval and Jeremy Pruitt getting fired, NCAA sanctions, all that's uh, coming down on that program. So for sure. Chandler left, Derek Gray, their other top running back, left for Oklahoma, their best offensive lineman left, their best defensive player left, and uh, he's still in the portal, probably going to Alabama from we, what we understand. So, yeah, we got Ross Martin on the line from Inside Carolina, 247 Sports, talking heels as they get ready for spring practice. Deami Brown, uh, Chaz Newsom gone, uh, Das Newsom gone. Uh, yeah. Wide receiver, uh, much like running back, the, the star power is gone, but a lot of guys that have been highly recruited ready to step up. Yeah, I mean, they do lose a lot, but I think they're less worried about that position than running back. Um, you have... Bo Corrales coming back using his extra year of eligibility. He was injured for the most of last year. Bo Corrales will be, I guess, a super senior, fifth year senior. Um, Diami Brown's brother, Coffrey Brown, is back. Uh, he had some production last year. Emory Simmons is back. But I think the name that most people should begin to know is Josh Downs. He had a kind of a breakout game in the Orange Bowl against Sex A&M. Um, they really liked him as a recruit. Didn't play as much last year until they really needed him. Um, in the orange rule with da with Diami out. So Josh Downs is that kind of uh, slot receiver, super speedy guy, uh, very high recruited guy out of Georgia. Uh, he's the guy I think is going to have a breakout season. Um, I think it's just all but expected. Um, behind him, Antoine Green is back. Rontavius Groves is back. So they got a bunch of names, a bunch of guys who've been there for a while. So I think it's kind of a plug and play system. It's going to be hard to replace Tommy Brown as a deep threat. I and mean, he was special. So you got to hopefully think his brother can step in. His brother's apparently faster, but, you know, it's not all about speed. It's about route running and separation and ball skills. So um, it's be, it's be tough to replace what Daz and Ami did, but I think they have enough guys where they can kind of plug some in, uh, a couple guys in, whether that be freshmen or sophomores that we haven't really heard of much. They're wide receiver for the Tar Heels. Downs caught seven last year. That's it. But three of them were yeah. touchdowns. <laughs> for yeah, he really did. He really didn't play much. You would think he, coming as a recruit, I mean, he was a top 100 guy. I thought he was going to play a lot more. He didn't. Uh, I think it's because they just like what they have with Daz, Ami, um, and, and Bo, and Emory, and some other guys with a little more experience. But, I mean, he's going to be – Josh will start next year for sure, stepping right in where Daz left. And uh, you, you hope that Daz gets drafted. Daz was a super talented guy that did not sit out the bowl game and uh, has, has a chance to be uh, you know drafted in the, in the first seven rounds. I guess the only seven rounds. Folks, please uh, like the video, share the videos on social media. I figure if uh, you enjoy it, the content, uh, others will as well. So please share the videos on social media and subscribe right here. Chas Rots, the only loss from the defense. Now, that's an enormous one. This guy was really fun to watch. Uh, just a crazy great athlete. 91 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, six sacks. But uh, 10 starters back on defense, which brings me to the obvious question that you bring back all these starters, but the defense was pretty porous last year. But you just expect that these guys are going to uh, just improve with with more reps, and then you get all the five star and four star talent coming in uh, with the uh, twenty one signing class. Yeah, I mean the defense is kind of where this team needs to improve, and I think should improve, and that's going to be the difference between this team winning seven eight games and getting to more of the ten eleven range, which I think they're capable of with the schedule they have. Uh, replacing J Chaz, Eugene Asante, who started for Chaz in the Orange Bowl. Um, what really is going to be the difference is the defensive line. Uh, they wore down against some of the bigger and better teams like Notre Dame and Texas A&M. Um, some of the freshmen and sophomores, that it's really tough to have them play a lot of minutes and, and really be impact players in a very physical position. Those guys should be more ready. Um, you saw some flashes from some from freshmen. I mean, Miles Murphy, Clyde Pender. Christian Varner, uh, KJ Hester, those names, guys that, you know, play 10 to 20 snaps near the end of the season, they should be ready to carry more weight. And then they return everyone. They return Tamari Fox. They return Taman Fox, who's coming back for that super senior year. Raymond Vahasek, who was a starting nose tackles back. Everyone's back up front. And with that, 
just comes experience, comes more bodies. You get younger guys into the fold, and they're super excited about some of these younger guys. Desmond Evans was a four four star, borderline five star recruit who was a freshman last year. Um, six six, you know, two sixty, two seventy, coming off the edge. They love him. Um, the experience with Tamon Fox, Tyron Hopper, Chris Collins. They love that, and then they add in the freshman Keyshawn Silver, a five star. Javari Ritzy, a very athletic four star. Um, there's just tons more bodies this year, and they get back some guys who were hurt, like Kendrick Bingley Jones, who was their best defensive line recruit from the year previous. Um, he was injured all last year. Uh, they loved him, and before he got injured, and he didn't play. So they add, I mean, they just add all these names that are just waiting to break out, and that's where the team's gonna get better. They get stronger up front. They're going to plug in Eugene Asante at linebacker. They bring back Jeremiah uh, Gimmel, who was kind of the heart and soul of the team and should be the leader of the defense this year. I mean, a very steady linebacker, a little bit limited just because of his size, but he knows where to be. He's been a starter for to be his third year as a starter. Um, you got to love that experience right in the middle of your defense. And then we can get into the secondary, but you bring back five-star Tony Grimes, uh, transfer from last year, Kyle McMichael, Storm Duck should be healthy. So barring any injuries, I mean, they're loaded in every position. And it's hard to find a weakness now as long as the off defensive line kind of lives up to what we expect them to do. Um, and I just love some of the guys they have on this team and, and some of the, the really athletic players that can really fit into kind of what is a positionless defense at some spots where the nickelback, the linebacker, the safety can all kind of play different spots and, and really confuse the defense by the speed and athleticism they bring uh, schematically. Awesome stuff from Ross Martin. Catch him on Inside Carolina, 247 Sports. You know the platform. It is uh, one of the gold standards in uh, college athletics. So uh, join Ross over there, and please lock it in right here as well. Ross, we appreciate you stopping by as always. I appreciate it, Mark. Thank you.